Hey guys, what's up? I uh, want to do a, a small, I guess, quick update on the uh, Grixis Explorer Pioneer deck that I've been kind of piloting on uh, Arena. And it's been working pretty well so far. i uh, played maybe five, six games of it and uh, won a majority of them. Um, the cool thing about this is that the um, new Dominaria stuff is out and Liliana of the Veil vale was reprinted. So she's in Standard and... Um, pioneer right now and she's used to be a modern powerhouse almost a staple of any sort of like black um strategies she's kind of fallen out of favor because she's a bit slow a little clunky to use and um yeah there's, there's just not any way for her to really stick on the board anymore and have like a, a threat presence as much um so yeah she's kind of relegated to like the you know afterthoughts you know um, but here in pioneer i think she's gonna make a very good um, be very powerful in the format now I don't know if there's any deck that has really made good use of her yet um, I know Grease Fang perhaps maybe Rakdos Sacrifice Rakdos Midrange um, maybe um, yeah one of those Rakdos decks could make her uh, or could use her really really well uh, or maybe some sort of control deck um, not too sure yet but I've been uh, kind of giving her a spin um, trying her out and she's done pretty well for my deck and I definitely do like her um, so let me go over the deck real quick um, and then we'll talk about some of my experiences with Lily so far um, so yeah deck wise um, it's a graveyard deck graveyard centric deck uh, we want a lot of things in our graveyard namely for Croxa um, not as much compared to my real life pioneer deck my real life pioneer deck uses uh, dig through time and uses um, Jace the uh, Rin's apology. Yeah, he's not that great, but either way, like my real life deck requires like more uh, stuff to go in the graveyard, especially to feed Croxa. Uh, here, we're not really feeding Croxa as much. We're trying to feed the Shredders. Um, so there's a lot. Of, we have a lot of low mana um, CMC stuff to play try to trigger shredder as much as possible and and kind of empty our hands into the graveyard feed the crocs uh, um in this case lily's going to help with that which is which is going to be uh kind of a cool thing i don't think we'll ever get to ult with her it's pretty pretty rare but her her edict effect is also really good um there's a lot of big creatures in here like our deck is made to handle a bunch of small weenies and we don't really have any good answers to real big creatures except for maybe drown and lock uh, and maybe like um, Bolus and um, you know kind of nuking him uh, with Bolus's minus three loyalty. Uh, outside of that, we we don't have a good way of dealing with big CMC creatures, um, which is not a huge issue also because the format has kind of re uh, been revolving around the three CMC um, curve right now. So a lot of threats that you're gonna face in Pioneer and Explorer. Or going to be around 3 CMC so that's cards like Graveyard Trespasser, um, Bone Crusher Giant, um, you know, May have May Devil Mayhem, you know, stuff like that. Um, a lot of the Angel stuff also, you know, uh, a bunch of Angels or CMC3, um, you have Grease Fang, you got a bunch of stuff that is just CMC3, CMC4 and higher creatures are, are more rare. Sometimes you'll see Omnath, um, sometimes you'll see um Kalidas. Um and that's honestly about it. Um four CMC higher is generally reserved for maybe some planeswalkers. Um you'll see like Chandra, Defiant Torch, um and you know so on and so forth. You'll uh, the higher you go you'll see that. Maybe you'll see a rainbow color uh Niv Mizzet or something. Other than that, most threats are gonna be within the CMC three range. Um you also got Hikijiki you know stuff like that so in my personal opinion right now i think uh, eliminate is a pretty good choice uh, of removal um, it's not too expensive it's only two two mana kill cmc3 and lower uh, both planeswalker and creatures which are uh, very pro um, predominant in um, pioneer right now and yeah it, it it really does all that you really need it to do um, kills your grease fang, kills you know opposing lilies, 
kills, uh, maybe Narset, stuff like that, which is really nice. Stuff that, you know, Fatal Push can't uh, really deal with, and Fatal Push is still a good card, it's just in um, Pioneer, you have very few ways of proccing the Revolt, so um, that's why I only play three. Um, I also play a, f I guess it's like a pseudo Fatal Push, uh, but it's also like a pseudo um, Dreadbore, because it kills any Planeswalkers or creature if you do kicker it. I like the one copy because sometimes um, it gets too expensive to play um, as a removal for anything bigger than, you know, as a, a permanent removal, I guess. So I like, I like playing the one copy. Um, kind of helps balance out your hand so you're not drawing too many uh, blood chiefs or you're not drawing too many uh, fatal. Kind of breaks up the uh, their usage there. And same thing with Eliminate. Um, if we had Dreadbore, I would probably play Dreadbore. I think Dreadbore is going to be pretty good, especially with Lily in the format now. You need an efficient way to kind of deal with her. And Dreadbore is a good one-for-one uh, -one trade with her or any other um, you know threats uh, in the format right now. Um, Ledger Shredder is our, our mainstay of our deck. You, you play him on turn 2 and you can kind of protect him. He can get really big. Um, helps dump your... You know, excess lands and dead cards in your hand into your graveyard. Uh, puts Crocs in the graveyard. You know, puts food for him to eat. And uh, yeah, that's that's the main point of Shredder. And if your opponent doesn't deal with it, it gets bigger and bigger. And eventually, it will just um, be a good blocker or a good um, aggro creature. So uh, Shredder for sure. Drown. Drowns work pretty well for me. I've for the most part and and or are able to. Uh, force my opponent to put a bunch of stuff in their graveyard and have drown live for majority of time if you um only thing is playing four copies seems to be dead in your hand and sometimes you'll draw and it won't be uh mo or if you draw multiple copies in your opening hands it's not too great yeah this card definitely want to see a little bit later in the game so i think three copies have been working pretty well for me uh i down brazen borrower uh down to one I found that I didn't really need his bounce effects as much. It's still handy for certain, um, you know, enchantments and stuff like that that I couldn't um, deal with. So I'll usually use Brazen Bar to, you know, uh, te out temple my um, opponent or control their board a little bit, especially if you're playing like Shark Typhoon and stuff like that. Brazen Bar is um, a good answer to that. Um, otherwise, for Artifact Hate, uh, Colgan's Command is probably gonna be your your um, sort of go-to. Um, also, your go-to um, two-for-one card, so really good. Uh, I'll talk about Lily in a second. Uh, Memory Deluge. Um, this is supposed to be Dig Through Time, um, but, uh, but obviously we don't have that in um, in Explorer, unfortunately. So I kind of been using Memory Deluge, and it's, it hasn't been bad. It's it's been a pretty decent late-game card because. Um, the deck does sometimes get there. You do get to seven mana quite often, um, and so memory deluge is great. And memory deluge, when you pitch for Shredder and you or you pitch for the Lily, it's not, it doesn't feel as bad because you know you might be able to use this a little bit later um, if the game continues. So pitching uh, um, memory deluge off um, off uh, off for Lily or off the for Ledger, um, not too bad. Um, and then. Three bullets here. Uh, I think three copies is fine. May I used to play four just because I really wanted to see the card. Sometimes I see too many of them, or sometimes I, you know, I think three is a good number. Uh, the one um, Kalidus here because there's a lot of mid-range decks going around right now. There's a lot of like um, small things that you want to kind of take care of, um, and you know he's got life link, so it kind of helps you, keeps you in the game, um, and so. He, and you know if they have no way of effectively removing him and you're able to kind of kill their creatures you can make a board of zombies which is kind of nice so yeah just the one of um i do side a, a secondary copy um you know but i think one in the main deck is fine uh the other optional card you can probably play is chandra uh i i had a hate love relationship with chandra sometimes i'm able to stick her on the board and, and you know, keep her alive uh most of the time i found myself not being able to keep her alive that well so I end up just, you know, kind of taking her out and um, playing Cletus over her instead. Because um, that seems to keep me in the game longer than Chandra has. And finally, just two bullets. Um, kind of like your, your end game once you're able to resolve him and protect him. 
uh, and just keep upticking him, he will just win you the game from from there on. Uh, and then for lands, just 24 lands, you really do need to see your lands. Um, and with Shredder and Lily, stuff like that, you can kind of turn your excess land into, um, you can kind of just cycle them, per se, with the Shredder. Or with Lily, you can just use excess land, keep up in your hand, discard it, and kind of trade a land for whatever your um, whatever your opponent has in their hand. So 24 lands. Um, this ratio has been working really well for me. And you definitely want to play as many dual lands as you can. This deck is, while there's not a heavy, huge uh, pip in any one color except for black, uh, you do want to be able to have a, um, a hand that has one of each color. And um, the reason why I don't play the Trinome is I think the Trinome is too slow. Um, this deck, you, you want to have black mana up available usually on turn one, black or blue, um, to start considering or to start, uh, you know, fatal pushing, thought seize. And so I didn't play any of the, um, the Grixis Trinomes. And their cycling cost is too expensive, and you draw them later in the game, they're kind of useless. Because... Um, you need your land up until the third or the you know the fourth land for this deck to really really work. You don't really have that much time to um, buy this this deck. The way I play it is I, I kind of just dump my hand as fast as possible to kind of trade resources and then start using uh, Bolus to gain me resources if I can flip him or this one if I can resolve one. Um, start upticking. Same thing with the lilies and um, and the the Kroxa. As long as I can get rid of my opponents. Uh, resources in their hand and control the board uh Kroxa or like you know bolus will be like kind of the end game there um okay so thoughts on my lily so far on her usage i found two copies been pretty well i, I definitely like love her edict effect uh, once you edict uh, edict them um most of the time they can't get rid of her the only time I could, i've seen anyone get rid of her is if they use maybe um um stomp from the bone crusher giant maybe and or maybe like colgan's command or something that's the only time they ever seem to be able to get rid of her other, other than that she usually does survive and she just you can just uptick her um uptick her from there and um kind of like put cards in your graveyard to kind of hopefully you have a crocs in the graveyard to kind of just be able to crocs on turn four even sometimes um and i found that um these two work really well so it doesn't feel too bad like if as long as you're discarding card and there's uh, a crocs in your graveyard it's fine um uh, once you get a crocs out and he'll just start just um you know do a lot of damage to both your opponent's health and resources and um you know they have to spend a lot of um, time trying to kill him and if they are trying to kill him or you know if they can't get rid of him then obviously you win a game and then you know your your, your um nickel bolus here are kind of like your backup plans in case um you know that plan fails i was using hikijiki but i felt like hikijiki wasn't doing too much for the deck it it does better in just like a pure rakdos mid-range deck where this deck is more of a control deck obviously um more of like a Grixis control a bit of mid-range um you know strategies uh, in in there because we we do kind of play on curve kind of put out threats stuff like that but definitely we uh we're more of a reactive deck because of all of our removal and all of our like you know discarding and um you know stuff like that uh, we're, we're not as um aggro as much as um rack those mid-range because they can make use of both the hikichiki token they can make use of the the goblin token granted i'd like the goblin token but every time i do play it it always gets removed or dies which is understandable. I mean, uh, Hikijiki is eating up a card from your opponent's hand. Um, and then, you know, he, when Hikijiki flips, you know, it's great. I guess my only issue is that there's nothing in my deck that I want to copy, like I mentioned before. I did try it out, but I, I ended up not liking it because there's really not anything for Hikijiki to copy other than itself, really. I have so many legendary creatures. And so Hikijiki, I felt like, just didn't work in the deck. I, I played, played it, put three mana out didn't do much i felt lily did a lot better than hikijiki i put three minute out on lily up ticked her or down ticked her and she just seemed to do a better job in this particular um style of deck so that's why i have um opt to play two lily 
I didn't want to play a third Lily, uh, mainly because if you draw too many of her, she might not be good, or she becomes kind of maybe redundant. Mm, I'm not too sure yet. I have to do more testing with her. Maybe she's good at three in this deck. I feel like two is a, a great number for her. Um, her minus effect is actually pretty important because you, this deck you have really a real easy time dealing with a bunch of like um, low mana creatures. You have a bunch of you know. Uh, fatal pushes um you got blood uh blood chiefs you got eliminate and drown so small creatures you're able to really easily deal with bigger creatures you have a little bit harder time dealing with it now i used to play on rampage which is kind of like your um budget version of um the uh, dread boar sorry can't spell rampage at the moment so yeah, so you know, on graphs rampage isn't too bad, like, but at the same time, I don't know, I just, I just didn't really like it. It was either too slow or just it didn't let me kill the thing I wanted to kill. So you know, I have to take it out. So Lily here kind of does that, helps you kill those um, pesky big creatures as long as you can keep the board clear, and uh, the um, uptick is also great. Um, now obviously I have. I don't really have any ways to really deal with planeswalkers uh, outside of blood, uh, blood chief and eliminate. I can kind of deal with it, and then maybe with Colgan's command, I can deal damage. For the most part, um, only way to deal with other planeswalkers if they do resolve, if they're four or five mana, then it's you, you kind of have to, to you kind of have to rely on Lickabolus here to kind of deal with that. Unfortunately, now I hope they put Dreadbore. I hope they put. Um, Dig Through Time or Treasure Cruise into the format, which would kind of help this deck a lot. Um, outside of that, looking at the uh, the cyborg, not too much has changed. I, des I decided to just go ahead and go with three Angers of the Gods. I really like this against a lot of uh, decks I, um, that I saw in Pioneer when I was playing in uh, in real life. And uh, Angers of the Gods kind of help deal with a lot of those decks that go wide. And the sooner you see it, the better. And it's okay to see multiple copies. And so... Um, that's worked out pretty well for me. Uh, I decided to side the uh, the third Coligans because I don't think I need three in the main deck. Um, it's kind of clunky sometimes, um, but I think uh, for Artifact Hate, I think uh, Coligan, Coligan's command is great. Um, gets rid of like opposing unlicensed hearse, gets rid of grab Dicker's cage, um, stuff like that. Um, outside of that, uh, yeah, we have some grave hate, um, additional grave hate with gold blanks and unlicensed hearse. Uh, Ash shot to mill ourselves. Um, the more cards we put in our graveyard, the better. Uh, really helps with our game plan of um, being able to cast uh, and escape Croxa as soon as possible. Um, Trader, just for other those weenie decks, uh, those decks that go wide, uh, or you know, cat oven decks. This this card shits on cat oven. They sack their cat. And, um, cool, you know. You, now you get a two-two zombie, and uh, yeah, to get a food token. So uh, love um, love this card here. Um, one inside, one in the main, and outside of that, everything else is pretty standard, I think. Uh, nothing too crazy. Um, dispute for those con um, other control decks, Aether Gust for other Rakdos mid-range decks um, that we want to deal with. Uh, pretty good overall. Um, yeah, I think that's really it. I, I think uh, I really have been enjoying playing this deck for the past uh, day or two, and... Um, yeah, as long as I don't misplay, I, I think it's it's gone pretty well. Uh, obviously, I, there's different card choices that you can make or change, and obviously it's it's a little different from Pioneer. You're playing against different decks, and you don't have all the cards of Pioneer yet. But this this gets as good as it or as close as it can get to my my actual real life deck, and I've been kind of just enjoying that. Anyways, um, that's it. I hope you guys enjoy, and I'll see you guys next time.